Hello, everyone. Our next speaker is Vincent Major, a researcher at the NYU Grossman School of Medicine. He works in predictive analytics, applying machine learning and deep learning techniques to electronic medical records. Vincent will have a pre recorded lightning talk, but he will be around for questions afterwards. Take it away, Vincent. Good Dr. Package Snapshots and Pack Rat. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but there's an increasing need for reproducible research and almost everything we do in medicine, but also increasing expectations from journals for data and code, and also increasing use of cloud computing, especially with PHI. And R has some particular challenges, particularly when we have different R projects running on our laptops, that we get pretty easy to accidentally break something by updating R for a particular package. So the goal of this work is to uh, bridging a solution to maximize reproducibility without sacrificing the interactive R Studio experience that we've come to love. So there's quite a few hurdles to reproducibility, but we're going to control as many factors as we can, particularly the operating system and libraries in that system, the R version and the package versions for a particular project. If all of these three things are controlled and specified, your analysis should always be reproducible. So my recommendation is definitely is being proactive is better than being reactive. Investing some time up front to make sure you have everything organized will definitely pay off in the long run. For two years, I've been using a solution using Docker package snapshots and a R package called Packrat that manages my uh, packages for me. So the reason we use Docker is Docker really has complete control over the operating system. It doesn't matter if we're running on my laptop or a server or AWS. I can specify a base operating system, um, which is a Linux, like Debian, for example. Then I can install any dependencies that I need, OpenSSL, libxml2, etc. Then I can install R, particular version, and install all of the R packages that I need. Now, what this means is everything is isolated and run together as a single entity which means I can pick up this Docker container and put it somewhere else to a different server, a different cloud platform or my own laptop and it will run identically the same. So a lot of this hard work for R has been done for us by, some, by a great team called Rocker. Um, it's particularly some version stable images. So what this means is for many of the last few years, R versions, for example, 3.4.1, there is a set of images exactly for that R version, which is really great. Particularly uh, on top of the base image is one that adds the interactive R Studio as well as some other options. So it's very easy to pull this image from the Docker Hub using Docker pull Rocker R Studio 3.4.1. And then when it comes time to test that out, we simply run that container. And when we go into the browser to see a fresh install of R and R Studio. We can see here in the session info that the R version is 3.4.1. So the great thing that the Rocker developers did is they changed the default CRAN repository to a dated Microsoft snapshot at MRAN. So you can see here if I install packages dplyr, for example, the URL that it goes to is actually not CRAN, but a Microsoft snapshot dated at 2017. 0928, which is the last day that that R version, 3.4.1, was the latest version. So in addition to this, um, I recommend doing a few things, which is mounting a folder of source code in a really obvious place inside the Docker container. More on that later. Adding your user ID, user ID um, so that any actions taken by the Docker container look like you were the user that took them. That helps with any permissions issues downstream and also initializing a Packrat project, which will control and organize all of your packages used for this project within the mounted source code directory. So what this looks like is a runtime call here with the user ID, the password, and the mount. And also once you're inside the RStudio, you install Packrat and initialize a project. 
So I've got some code online that you can follow, but I'm also going to work through a demo. So what we'll do is I uh, am in a server here. If I make a directory for an uh, example project and go into that directory, you see I have nothing in here. But then if I run the runtime argument uh, parameters I just showed you, we see the user ID, the example password, and you mount the current working directory. Then I can go to my browser, and I see a uh, login page. The login is RStudio, and the password I just updated. And we'll see we log into a fresh version of RStudio. Now, there's nothing in here. Now, of note, we logged in as a user called RStudio, which means when we get the working directory, we're actually at that user's home, home RStudio. But I mounted a different location of where my source code is. So I will change the working directory to that location, slash work. I see there's nothing in here. So if I go back to my terminal and I touch the test R, I'll see it pop up straight away here on the right. And similarly, if I create a new R script, save there. It's script R, I will see here that it's also outside the container in my source code directory. So the great thing about this, moving everything into a slash work location, is cognitively we know everything in there is going to be copied outside. So the next thing to do is install Hacker App. And then we use Hacker App to initialize a project at the same location, the, the project location. We see it creates a folder and some other details here. Um, and it, if we check the library paths right now, and there'll be the standard Linux ones. But if we do packware on to turn on the project, we see those library paths are updated to this location. So if we go into library Linux 3.4.1, we see the only package right now installed in Packrat is the Packrat itself. So if we install a test package, it's our color brewer, we will see in the printout here, it actually is installed into this location. And I, get, I got it from the MRAN 2017, September 28. A snapshot and we see it here on the right. So to really uh, give a further example of this, I have another image running. Here it is. So if I log in again. So this is sort of what I do each day when I go to work. So here I am in a blank uh, studio because I've refreshed the session. Um, and I have actually stopped this container and brought it back up again. So what I will do is I have an example script in the pack rat here at slash work. So if I check the library paths and go pack route on to turn it on again, the library paths will have it updated. Now if I go to my example script, straight away I can load ggplot and load dplyr and run my analysis just like it ran yesterday, even though I stopped and brought this container back to life again. So hopefully that was helpful for everyone um, and thank you for any questions and thanks for listening. Hi, we're already over time, but if there's any quick questions, I can take them now. Yes, do you have any opinion about the new RENV package instead of PackRat? Yeah, I was actually not, not, not aware of that at all. Um, I would definitely be looking into that a little further. I think it's very interesting that uh, it was one of the same developers and you know, learning a lot of mistakes, I think, is a, a good example of what the R community is like anyway. Um, I would definitely hey, be looking into it. I'm Isaac Rahm from the University of California. And um, another question, uh, can, can people run uh, R notebooks and RMD files? Yeah, once you get into the R Studio, um, everything works in the, in the normal way. So um, I do use a lot of R notebooks in this exact system. Um, the only issue is sometimes when the container goes down um, for whatever reason, 
uh, it tries to bring back up the R notebook, but it's frozen between not knowing which set of libraries it's using. So you have to just be patient with it and then turn the pack rat back on um, and then everything sort of comes back to normal. Excellent. And maybe we have time for one more question. Um, user says a naive question, but th does Rocker support the R version four and higher? Yes, um, I believe there's some links in there uh, on the Rocker organization, uh, sorry, on the Docker hub for Rocker um, that they've split their repositories into a different place starting at R version 4.0. I think they decided that uh, instead of stop uh, building on things for years now, that they were going to start fresh in another repository. So just find that link um, that it will be on there somewhere. All right. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, everyone.